Hi everyone and thanks for joining me. Today's project is another embroidery in the hoop project. I'm using my Janome 500E and you need at least a 5x7 frame and this one is called Sip Happens. I hope no one's offended. I made these for a fun girls weekend that unfortunately we had to cancel due to the COVID situation but these were just for fun. I think they would make fun uh, stocking stuffers, office gifts, bachelor parties, bachelorette parties, uh, bridal showers, things like that. Just something cute and fun. Uh, the design itself, I wish I could take credit for it, but it is by designs by Little B and I'll have all of the product shoes as well as the file linked in the description below the video. Make sure you go over and give her some love. I love her designs and I hope you enjoy this tutorial. It's super simple, beginner friendly, and again, you need at least a five by seven hoop to make this particular project. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is take our tearaway stabilizer and prepare our frame. So I'm just going to cut a piece big enough for my frame, slightly larger. You guys know I like to use a rotary cutter. And we're just going to go ahead and hoop that by laying it on top. I'm not even going to worry about where the center is. It doesn't really matter in this case. So we are hooped, we're ready to go. Drum test, sounds good. And so the first thing we're going to do is take this over to the machine and get it all set up. So I've got it on my design and I'm just going to let it print it right in the middle of my frame. So I don't need to do anything. So I'm just going to click okay. The machine's going to set itself up. And again, I don't have to worry about the center position. So the first thing I'm going to do is let it print out the placement stitch or stitch out the placement stitch. So I'm just going to hit start. It's going to stitch a couple of stitches and I'm going to stop it. Trim my threads. And start it. So you can tell by this, so let me zoom you in. You can tell by this exactly how big your design is or how big your next piece needs to be. So you need to cut a piece of vinyl that is at least that big. If you wanna take it out and get very precise, you can. This is bigger than I need, but it happens to be a scrap that I have. So I'm just going to place that down, place that down and I am just going to tape that into place. You could just hold it if you want, but since I'm trying to do the camera and everything else, I'm just going to tape this so that I don't have to worry about it too much. So on my machine, it tells me that the next step is going to be the happens. So I've got the color of thread in that I want. I've got my vinyl taped down lightly. I'm still going to watch it and I'm just going to go ahead and hit start. So a couple stitches, stop, see if you need to cut your tail. Mine went ahead and made it just fine, so I'm just going to leave it. And we're going to stitch that out. Okay, so I'm going to do a color change. In the last video, somebody said they wanted to see that. So we'll do that on camera. Just going to grab my black thread. Reload the machine. and start with my next color. OK, 
Okay, so just finishing up step three. Before we go to step four, which is going to be the circle on the top, we're going to unhook it from the machine, remove it, turn it over, and you can still see the outline of the design. And we're going to add another piece of vinyl on here. So this is going to be the back. So I'm just going to cover this up, making sure that the design is totally covered. And I'm just going to tape it down. And again, I'm on the back of the hoop. This is just some painter's tape. Just make sure the tape stays out of the stitching area. If it gets in there, it's not a huge deal. It's just a little bit of a pain to pull it out of your stitches. All right, now we're gonna turn it back over. Hook it back up. Get our tail out of the way, and we're going to proceed with step number four. And that's just going to put a circle that's going to tell us where the snap is going to go. And I'm just going to trim off that little tail. There we go. And now we're going to go to step five. And it's up to you what color you want to do. I'm going to do this one. I'm just going to keep the black in. And this is going to stitch those two pieces together. Okay, I'm going to raise the presser foot. Now it's going to mark some stitches right here that's going to tell me where to put the pocket on. So I'm just going to let it do that. This is step number six. It's just going to put a dash on each side. All right, this is our final step on the embroidery machine. We're going to remove it from the machine. We're going to flip it over and where it put those two stitches, we're going to line our pocket up. And I need to, looks like I got a little bit of a knot there to get rid of that. Okay, so we have our stitch here and our stitch here. That tells us where to put the pocket. We need to take another piece of vinyl and line it up right with those lines and make sure that it covers the bottom. So I'm just lining it up like that and then I'm gonna tape that down, making sure that everything is covered from there down and it's lined up. So I'm gonna tape that down. Again, I'm just using some painter's tape. It's going to stitch around the bottom, so if you want to tape it at the top, you can. So I've got my pocket taped on right there. Turn this over. And we're going to stitch out our final step which is step number seven. All right, so now we're going to take it over to our prep area and I'll show you the next step. Okay, so you're going to notice everything changed colors. I actually finished this one. This is the one that we just stitched out. However, I forgot to hit record when I finished 
the last segment of the video. So I stitched out another one really quick. This time I'm using white. And this is where we're at after we've stitched on the machine. You want to go ahead and snip off any threads on the front, snip off any threads on the back, do any cleanup that you need to do. And once you have that done, you can go ahead and remove this from the hoop. And then what I like to do is remove all my tape and remove as much of the tear away as I can. Um, you can leave it in there and just cut around it, but I just figure why cut more layers than I need to. So I try to go ahead and remove as much of the stabilizer as I can once I have all of my tape removed. So go ahead and just rip your stabilizer out of there. That will take care of one layer of stuff that you don't need to be wrestling with when you're trying to cut this out. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Just I just get the bulk of it out of the project. All right, you're going to want a pair of very sharp scissors. Some people work better with small scissors. Some people work better with large scissors. I happen to be one of the large scissor people and I cannot cut straight to save my life. So I'll show you what else I do. A little hack I do just to keep my lines nice and straight. All right, so we've got the stabilizer ripped out and what the ob objective is, is to cut as close to that stitch line, but still leave a little margin of vinyl so that you don't compromise the stitches that are holding the whole thing together. So you want to cut close to those stitches, but not so close that you risk the stitches coming undone through the side. So you can see I've done all of these really closely, but not too close. So that's the objective. The other thing I can tell you, again, use sharp scissors, move the project and not the scissors. So when you're coming around these corners, move the project keep your try to keep your scissors straight keep your scissors straight up and down if you have them like this or like this what you're going to do is end up cutting your stitches on the opposite side so if i was cutting at an angle like this as i'm cutting through the bottom side's cutting through those stitches so you're going to be very upset with yourself because you're going to have to start over now you can do the whole thing with scissors if you want like i said i am the world's worst scissor cutter and I think it's because I'm left-handed I cut with my right hand because that's what I grew up learning in school everybody showed me how to do everything right-handed so I just am not a good scissor cutter but what I like to do is just take a ruler and go along my straight edges and take care of those with a rotary cutter don't have to do this you can totally do it all with scissors in fact most people do do it all with scissors I just do what works for me. There's no right or wrong. And I'm gonna get this area. Again, I'm gonna get close to those stitches, but not so close that you're going to cut through them. So this is really a handy way for me to get straight lines on the straight lines. Now I'm gonna obviously have to finish it up with scissors. So again, you want a pair of really sharp scissors. And what I'm going to do is start here. You can kind of see that margin that I left here. I'm gonna to try to keep a similar margin. And if it's not perfect, it's not perfect. It's, nobody's gonna notice. So I'm gonna turn my project as I'm cutting, try to do it all in one smooth motion. I'm getting a little close there. All right, I'm gonna cut that off. So I did that. Now I'm going to go up this way. And the less that you open and close your scissors, the smoother your cut's going to be. So notice how I'm turning the project, not my scissors. All 
And you can leave as much or as little as you're comfortable with. That's a little bit heavy on that one corner. So turn that down a little bit more. There we go. So again, there's no right or wrong, whatever works for you. Get this corner. And again, you can cut this whole thing out with scissors. You don't have to do it the way I do it. I just am a horrible scissor cutter. I always have been. I got that one done. I like to cut from the front most of the time, but because this gets a little bit awkward this way, I'm gonna turn it over and cut this side. Again, keep those scissors straight up and down so that you're not cutting at a different angle on the opposite side. Okay, so we've got it all cut out. Now you can see I've got some cam snaps out. When you use cam snaps, if you're not familiar with these, I'll run through it really quickly. You're going to use two pieces that look like a tack. That's these two pieces. Looks like a thumbtack. And then you need a male end and a female end. So this is a female, that's the male, and then you've got the two tacks. So each cam snap will have those same pieces. And let me just show you what they look like from the back side so that you understand what you're looking for. So that's the back, this is the fronts. All right, so you're gonna need your set of cam snaps. You're going to need a D-ring. I'll link all of this in the description below. We're just gonna take our D-ring and place it on the hook just like that or the strap so it's the hook is facing up now we're going to take this tool which comes with your cam snap set and you're just going to go right in the center of this little hole and make a hole through the both pieces of faux leather just like that you're going to take your cam snap put it so that you're looking at the back of the tack like that. I'm going to turn it over. Now we're looking at the back with the pocket and you can take either end, the male or the female. I'm going to take the female end and it goes on and it looks like that. So the other side of it looks like that. You want that side down so that it looks like this. All right, and then you're going to take your pliers and the black side of the pliers goes to the back side of the tack back black and it just nests down in there just perfectly and then you just line everything up straight and give it a good squeeze and we've got part one of our snap in so it looks like that from the back what i like to do at this point is fold this down kind of make sure it's straight and then just kind of push on it and it will leave a little indent right there. And that tells me where the other half of the snap goes. So I'm gonna take my pokey tool, center it right in the center of that circle, and I'm gonna just poke through the pocket layer, pocket layer only, right in the center. Just like that, I'm not poking through the back. All right, now you're gonna take your other tack on the inside so that the stick part of the tack is sticking on the outside. We're going to take the male end like this. Looks like that on the back. Oops. Looks like that on the back. Looks like that on the front. We're going to put that on the front. And again, black side to the back side. Squeeze. Test it. Works great. And now we can just take one of our nips Oops. slide it out I've got this Jim Beam honey and slide it in bada bing bada boom sip happens so this is it this is the finished product I think these are so cute I think they'd be so fun for a girls weekend fun for a bachelorette party or an office gift a stocking stuffer all kinds of things, really fun. And of course you can change the front. This is just the way the file comes and I will link that in the description below the video. For this one, I use marine vinyl from My Punk Broidery. 
This one is also marine vinyl from My Punk Forgery, as well as this one. This one is more of a, this isn't marine, this is, um, it's almost like a patent leather. It's shiny. I don't know if I can get it to shine for you, but this one was a little more tricky to cut out. You gotta be really careful because it cuts really, really easy. Um, these right here were from So Hungry Hippie, and these are kind of a holographic um, vinyl, so those turned out really cute. And this is marine vinyl. I believe I got this one at Joann's, and this is cork from Hobby Lobby. So lots of possibilities. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to click that bell so that you're notified every time there is a new video. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, never stop making. See you guys. Bye-bye.